Hello everyone, uh, my name is Alina. Today we will present our report on CNN preprocess ML and deployment of histopathological lung images. Our uh, project uh, goal is assist hospital laboratories with diagnosis of lung cancer types using histopathological lung tissue image and ML. Convolutional neural networks. CNN is another class of deep neural networks. CNN machine learning model uh, can capture the high level representation of the input data, making it most popular uh, for computer vision tasks such as image classification. CNN models, uh, one or multiple convolution layers, extract the simple features from input by executing uh, convolution operations, while CNN gives us the option of adding more layers to the CNNs to solve more complicated tasks in the uh, computer vision. It comes with its own set of issues. It has been observed that training the neural networks becomes uh, more difficult with the increase in number of added layers than accuracy. With ResNet, it becomes possible to surpass the difficulties of training uh, very deep neural networks. ResNet 50, uh, CNN has a various models such as LeNet, AlexNet, ResNet, etc. We searched these models and decided ResNet is the most suitable for our project. Deep residual uh, networks like the popular ResNet 50 model is a convolutional neural network that is 50 layers deep. ResNet has many variants uh, that run on the same concepts but have different numbers of layers. ResNet 50 is used to denote the variant that can work with 50 neural networks layers. ResNet 50 made the use of three layers bottleneck uh, blocks to ensure improved accuracy and laser training time. ResNet 50 with Keras. How do we use ResNet 50 with Keras? Firstly, we need Firstly, we need to run a code to define the identify identity blocks to transform the CNN into a residual network and build the convolution block. Then we build the 50 layers ResNet model by uh, combining both blocks. Finally, we need to train the model for the required tasks. Uh, Keras allows us to easily generate a detailed summary of the network architecture we built. Hello everyone. Now Andar will continue. Hello everyone. I'm going to tell about the machine learning part. Um, uh, firstly, uh, since our expert data analysis was having missing parts in this process, pre-process, we extended our missing and completed missing parts of our expert data analysis. We, we first randomly selected images from each class and printed them as follows. Original red, green, blue channels and grayscale. You can see here. As it can be seen in the grayscale as well as uh, green scale uh, channel. Sorry. Um, the cancerous ones are more darker than the uh, healthy ones. While also in the original one, you can see that this one is uh, more whitish than the other ones as you mentioned before. Uh, Pre-process and data augmentation. In addition, we conducted various other pre-processing applications using image data generator parameters, such as in this example. Uh, we shifted our images, flipped them and rotated them. Here you can see the shifting process on a sample image of SCC class. In this one, uh, they are flipped. You can see them here and rotated, as you can see in these parts. Um, a data augmentation part. In this one, uh, I uh, uh, I used image data generator here and um, increased the number of images that we had in each classes. We normally had 15,000 in total. 5,000 each one, and we increased that number to 41,580. Uh, some of the images from the augmented 
augmentation process are here. Under, under may I ask a question? Yes. You might remember that I asked this question in previous in presentation, but I would like to ask the question to you again. How yes. can you control the, the number of images after uh, rotation, uh, shifting, whatever you apply? How can you control the, the number of images after this data augmentation? I think you do it here. Um, there is a for loop and if the number uh, reaches 20, it stops generating new images. So it is about the batch size, right? I think it is about the batch size. Uh, I am not asking size, this. Of course, I am not of asking this. I am asking, you said that at the beginning we have 15 images. You end up with 41, 580 images. Yes. I am asking, how do you control if you would like to have 65,000 images or 35,000 images? Can you control this? It's a random number. Or how can you end up with this number of images in the calculation? I can show you the um, I can show you the code actually. No, I am asking you. Data. Do you know or not? Um, I, all I know is it is related to this part, but I don't know the rest. Okay. Anybody in your team, Alena? No. Furkan? Mm, nothing came to my mind. Okay. Okay, as I already suggested for our uh, teams, please learn if you copy and paste some code from some blogs. Of course, you can do it, but you need to understand every line of code and uh, how it's done, why it is done. Okay, and you need to be ready to explain and to update this code in the uh, four weeks or five weeks later, we will have a code review. In that code review, I will ask much more specific questions to you. Is that clear for everyone? Yes. Okay, let's continue. Setting up train and validation data sets. Uh, in here, using flow from director function of Keras, we formed up train and validation sets, as you can see here. And um, train and test images were kept on RGB channels because um, in our data sets, some of the images have similar uh, colors. I mean, from other classes, but they have similar colors, but we kept them in RGB. Uh, train and test, uh, sorry, the reason for 224, 224 here is because ResNet 50 input sizes uh, to 224 times 224. In addition to that, that um, Önder, region, yes, sir. Is there any way that we can use ResNet 50 with other resolution? Uh, yes. Anyway, yes. The, uh, I I observed the um, architecture of ResNet 50. Uh, there are other sizes, but I just looked for my size. You know. Okay. So please uh, check that. Actually, uh, if you can, it's a good idea to use the higher input sizes. Of course, it takes much more memory and time, but you need to try it because sometimes it's not a big problem today's with today's GPUs because ResNet 50 is maybe uh, five, six years old network. At that time, it's not easy to train. But since ResNet 50 is a pre-trained network, you yes. can easily use higher size inputs. So please yes. learn how to use ResNet 50 with their configuration file. Okay. Okay, but uh, there is a concern about our data set because of the sizes and the number of images the um i mean byte of the files are getting more and more so we don't know how to um, cope with this in deployment part as, as i explained in the uh, two two presentations ago 
Uh, you can use TensorFlow Data Pipeline API. TF dot data. Okay. You can use data pipeline uh, of TensorFlow library. So in that library, it can handle large amount of data set with ease. You can, uh, if you like, you can watch my tutorial about that. TensorFlow data pipeline for image data sets. And I already shared the uh, collab notebook over there. You can just use the code over that and you can understand how to use it. And so it will not be a problem nowadays with even with collab environment. You can you can easily handle up to two million images. OK, OK, thank you so very much. You can do it easily because thank we tried with 700,000 uh, images and it wouldn't be a problem. OK, thank you very much. This was a uh, kind of stuck on my mind you know thank you for telling us anyways um yeah next page um as you can see we use ResNet 50 model which is pre-trained pre-trained model on keras io applications uh, here we set up the image size as we as i mentioned before weight parameter means that the pre-trained image net weights for the model will be used. I mean, uh, it is like built in and we, we will not change anything. Um, for model, uh, as you can see here, we used activation rel ReLU and activation softmax. I will mention what why we use them and what do they what they mean. Uh, flattening is the process of transforming data into one dimensional array for use in the following layer. Uh, considering our research and observations, we used Relu actuation, which worked well and fast in other projects. I mean, uh, I googled a lot of um, health related uh, machine learning studies and they were using this activation method. Uh, according to Keras layers, softmax is, max is often used for activation in the last layer. Uh, that's also why why it is written here. Then we uh, trained and tested our um, our model ten times. I mean ten epochs. Each one took about twenty-six minutes. And as you as you can as you expected, the accuracy has increased and loss decreased. However, in the um, graph you can see that here uh, there's a decrease in the accuracy but um, it's probably normal uh, prediction results in the in the last one we evaluated our model and as you can see we have a 98 percent accuracy now and that, for, and that, can i ask a question in the previous slide sorry You evaluate the model with the validate data set? Yes. yes. But is it a good idea? No. <laughs> Explain. Um, the computer will will have already seen it. That's why it's model, going to. The model. Yes. And so in your, when you split your data set, don't you have a test data set? Uh, we did, but um, I actually separated them as um, train and test. I didn't have another fund for validate. So I did it like 75% and 25%. Okay, then I kindly kind of remind you that. First, yes. split the test and train. Then split okay. the train again, train and validation. Okay, okay. I'll do it. Then okay. uh, for parameter, hyperparameter tuning and model selection used on the validation data set. Okay. After you freeze, you choose the model and freeze the hyperparameter values, then test it with test data set. Is okay. that clear for you? Yes. Aleyna, Furkan, do you understand yes, what I mean? So otherwise it, it is not good because just repetition of the same yes. sets of the Validation and the test is not a good idea. 
Okay. Yeah, you are right. Since you mentioned that you have lots of data, why you do this? Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, can we use um, augmented, uh, I mean augmented images for this part? Because you know they are uh, synthetic images, so I'm not sure if we can you, use it. For you need to be very careful. Use the augmentation. First, split the data set in train test and validation. Then okay. apply this augmentation on these sets separately, so that okay. you are sure that uh, the one image with augmented uh, transformation cannot be exist in the test set. Okay. You understand? And that's what yes. Is. Okay, be, 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 be careful about this. Otherwise, you can cause the data leak. Okay. Because you show something related in the train set, then you just rotate it and give it in the test set. It's a cheat, right? Okay. Yes, you're right. Um, now, uh, Furkan is going to tell about deployment and impl implementation, but after that, we are also going to mention our plans for the next steps, I mean. Um, hi, uh, actually. But, but before deployment, can you go back up? Uh, I want to explain uh, shortly. Okay, but do, let me. do you hear me? Yes. I am saying that before deployment, could you go back one slide? So what are the there are three classes, right? Alena, what kind of a machine learning problem is that? Alena? Uh, I don't know. It's a multi class classification, am I right? Yes. yes In multi class classification, you have different metrics, am I right? Yes. Yes. But you didn't mention any of them here in the results. You just used the accuracy. What about this F1 precision recall? Are we under curve? Uh, are you talking about confusion matrix? We, confusion matrix is one of the things to visualize the results. Yes. And then use the this true positive, false positive, etc., and arriving into precision recall and then F1. But you didn't yes. mention any of them. I but actually I actually included it, but uh, the measurements were kind of low because according to my test, they, they, you need the yeah. report. I can show it to you if you want because it's uh, in the other tab. OK, so if the accuracy is almost 100%, it cannot be the precision recall about 10%. Do you understand me, uh, yes. Furkan? Furkan? Mm, yes, teacher. So here you did not mention the metrics. Metrics means that how you calculate the performance of a model. If it's a multi-class, you need to mention about at least F1 score. Yes, uh, I can show it to you if you want to. It should be in the presentation. Yeah, but I removed it because of low uh, accuracy results. Because in my previous testings, uh, I mean, train and test results, uh, they were like 80% or something. So I thought that something was wrong and removed it. Okay, so you need to put it back. And uh, if the, yeah. now I see the accuracy almost 100 here, on that slide, yes. almost 100. The recall and precision must be a, a good numbers. So yes. please, please uh, everyone, you need to be aware of that. If it's a multi-class classification, you need to use the uh, proper metrics and you need to discuss the results by using the some reports. Uh, Önder, do you know which kind of, not Önder, Furkan, do you yeah. know uh, how can you uh, report the classification result? Mm, actually, uh, we don't uh, learn All yet. Right. 
Aleyna, do you study? Aleyna. Soruyu bir daha sorabilir misiniz? Yes. How can you report the classification result? Can you use a Python library for that? Uh, I can uh, I search uh, classification, but I don't know the answer. Okay, so we have the scikit-learn library, right? In that scikit-learn library, we have the classification report function for you. Please use these. The other teams already use. If you use the classification report function in the scikit-learn library. Really? Actually, right. we uh, install this library, but uh, we didn't use. If you use it, you can easily report the classification performance and you would see the precision recall F1 accuracy in that report. Right? Here you didn't mention any results about your model and you didn't mention the Overfit, underfit. Aleyna, do you think your your model is overfit, underfit, or just fit? An idea, Aleyna? Uh, underfit, maybe? Do you know what is underfit? Şey, overfit. Which one? <laughs> So overfit. Like, what is the clue for overfit? How do you observe uh, overfit? Results. Which results? Prediction, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what about Furkan? Mm, high accuracy. High accuracy is, means overfit. Do you believe mm. that? Um, okay, so I'm understand. not sure, but mm. yeah. of course you need to compare the training accuracy with test accuracy. If training accuracy and the test accuracy are close to each other, it's okay. But if one of them is higher than the other and the, the difference is very much, then you can think about underfit and overfit. But I try to emphasize that you need to understand related concepts and ready to explain on your data, on your model, on your performance. Do you understand, Burkan, Önder, Aleyna? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, teacher. So in, in that pre-processing and uh, the initial model represent uh, results, uh, your preparation is not enough. Okay, please. Think about more and search about how to uh, calculate the model performance in multi-class classification, how to report it. Okay, Aleyna? Yes. Furkan? Evet, hocam. Okay. Do you have uh, other things to share with us? I have, I have to mention our next plans and Furkan also has a part about his uh, topic. Is it related with deployment? Yes, he's going. He's he's responsible. In this presentation, for... let's keep the deployment out of the scope because okay. other teams also uh, keep these out of the scope. But if you have anything related with pre-processing and initial results of your model, uh, you yes, can share. Okay. Uh, I have to tell something um, before this presentation. I mean, after dinner, I try. I I converted images to smaller size and uh, even though that when I converted the images to CSV file uh, the file size was over 40 gigabytes so uh, in previous presentation in exported data analysis you had asked us for a CSV file and uh, so here is the result I mean even if even though I converted it to smaller images I resized them. I mean, uh, the CSV file was so huge. Only for what do you mean by class. CSV file? I didn't understand. What do you mean by CSV file? Uh, previously, in exported data analysis presentation, uh, some groups converted their 
images to CSV files Nobody as RGB. Images to CSV file. They it's did. The metadata. They metadata did. means that CSV files has just some yes. information about the image. You don't convert image to CSV files. Impossible. But, but I remember Bill Gates group uh, converted the images no, to CSV. Yeah, I please carefully listen. Pay attention to the words. You yeah, don't I did. Convert, convert image to CSV file because CSV file takes files. Images are not yes. text. We I are know. just creating a metadata. Metadata means that data about data. For example, what is the name of the image file? Where it is located? What is the maximum width? What is the maximum height? What is the color depth? These are the data about images. They are converting, collecting the information about images to CSV file. They don't convert images to CSV file. Do you understand this? Yes, uh, that is uh, what I meant to say. I but could you said that converting uh, images to CSV file. There is nothing in the literature. We are creating metadata CSV file, but okay. you need to create this one. What are you gonna do with that? Um, I I I actually don't know because uh, you mentioned it before. But uh, in in previous uh, expert data analysis uh, presentation, you asked us for metadata CSV file, but we said we didn't have it, and you saw you asked us how we knew the sizes and stuff. Okay, and then you yeah. can do it easily by just reading the file and check the height, width. Yeah. I, I've done it. And the text file couldn't be so big. There is yes. a mistake here. I was going to mention it now. Uh, we check the sizes, and uh, as we told before, all of the sizes are same. I mean, uh, they are one to one um, okay. uh, ratio. So please update your uh, report as well. Finally, uh, as well. Uh, one more thing. I have a question uh, for modeling. Uh, as as you can see, we use the pre-trained -tra model, ResNet 50, I mean, pre-built in stuff. Uh, so uh, are we expected to create our model? Of course, for com comparison yes. reason, you can have yes. a custom model and you okay. can train it with your data because your data is huge. You can do it okay. and you can report the result of the custom model. Plus, you can just unfreeze some layers in the rested model and you can see the impact of it okay. so some uh, and you need to learn uh, transfer learning as well and i will ask you alayna furkan some questions for you about transfer learning now you just do something but i am not sure that you know what you are doing for example why do you didn't freeze or you why you freeze the layers of rest that model blah blah so okay. there will be some questions you need to be prepared for it okay so okay. i hope to see that you have some uh, alternative models either custom models or other pre-trained models so you can compare each of them and select one of the model for the deployment Okay. Okay, Furka, okay. Alena. Okay. Okay. So please improve these uh, pre-processing steps. Understand it. And uh, actually, I will have the questions later, again, uh, in the code review. And I I want to see that everybody is acknowledgeable on that. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else to report? Uh, no. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Please improve it and include it to your final report. Okay, we will. All right, thank you. Thank you.